I've been uh, wanting to do this video for a while and I've been putting it off, but uh, we'll give it a go. Uh, what I want to do is give you my perspective on what Blender 3D is. I've been using Blender for uh, about 23 years, since the turn of the century, and I started doing 3D in Blender, and I've always just used Blender. And nowadays I'm teaching a lot, and I'm using other software as well. So I sort of want to give you um, what makes Blender special, what makes it different from other software. And to give you that idea, I want to start with the other software. So if you're new to 3D, you're probably going to go into Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a free online uh, modeler. And it works very simple. So this is the Tinkercad interface. I can make stuff in 3D in here. And the way I make it is I use all these shapes on the right. I can drag them to the workspace, you see? And I have a 3D shape. And what I can do is I can add them together. So I select two, merge them together, and I can subtract stuff as well. So I can take one of these, uh, hold C to put it down there, see? I can put this, merge this as well, and remove it. So this way, is it working? Is it working? It should be working. It didn't work, you see? So I've got this. Try again. So we're putting the circle. We'll make it a bit bigger. Selecting everything, and we say group. And you see, we have a shape. So this is a nice example of modeling. I can just take shapes, I can change them a bit, and there's lots of shapes that we can take. This is great, but this is all we can do pretty much in Tinkercad. It's not all, you can take it quite far, but basically you have a library of three-dimensional shapes, right? Basic shapes, you've got some design starters, like look, there's a nice present, and we can drag them all in and make something. And this is great fun if you're just getting started in 3D. But pretty soon, it becomes limiting. Because pretty soon, you're going to say, oh, I want to change the colors. Or I want to make something that fits onto something else in the real world. And that's pretty hard to do in Tinkercad. So then you say, ah, I don't want the basic shapes. I want to make my own shapes. And the next level you could look at, for instance, is... Onshape. Onshape is also a free online tool with a caveat. Um, if you design something in Onshape, uh, it becomes theirs, or it becomes at least part of the community, or the licensing is troublesome, and uh, I don't want to go into licensing. You can use it for free, you can design whatever you want, but pretty much assume that everybody can get your design once you've designed in here. So what you do that's different here this is called sketched-based design. So I don't have a library of three-dimensional shapes. I just have a bunch of tools. And I can say, on this flat surface, I'm going to sketch a shape. And then once I have the two-dimensional shape, I can say, I'm going to make it 3D. Great. And we can say how big we want it. See? We have a 3D shape. And then again, we can sketch for instance, on this surface, and we'll make a little rectangle. And I say, now I want a hole. So I'm not gonna draw it out, but I'm actually gonna remove it. Remove it, see? We're getting a hole. And we can make this very complicated. So this, we can draw, right? I can draw on the front as well, not just up and down. I'm gonna do one more. So we're gonna draw on the front, sketch on the front, and we'll make a hole through the entire thing. So we say, extrude this thing we just sketched, remove it, see? and uh, we'll go both ways. Go on, make a hole through the entire thing. This is a great tool. One of the big differences, so to start off, Tinkercad, we just have a cube or something that looks a bit like a cube and we use the cube and we can just change the shape of it. On shape, 
we can draw our own shape, right? We don't just have cubes. So you can actually go in and you can say, I want to draw, uh, oh wait, on more. I can draw whatever I want. See, so I have a shape or I can do splines. We can make it round. We can draw whatever we want in here. So this one has to go from start to finish and I can trim the curves that I don't need and I have a really weird shape. See, I can draw a weird shape and make it three dimensional and it's not working because probably because this thing here, there's something weird, you see? So we're in the sketch and where are my scissors? Can I get rid of this? Yeah. Looks like a nice shape. There we go. That was it. So we can make stuff and added bonus to this one. If I want to make this a specific size, I can go into my sketch and say, yeah, but this has to be 25 millimeters and it's 25 millimeters. So if you want to go into this one and we say, I want this one to have a certain radius right radius ah, i did it wrong let's do it again i want it's not a radius right it's called a diameter so we'll do 20 millimeter diameter and we say i want it to be a specific distance from the bottom like 25 millimeters i can do that which is great so that hole could be the hole for a nut or a bolt uh, for a bolt, right? Not a nut. A nut is a six-sided thing. A bolt. A round bolt hole. And I can make it whatever size I want. And actually, if I'm further along in the design, I can still go back and say, but hey, no, nah, it should be 12 millimeters. And it's 12. And it can update the design. This is very efficient. So you can make very complicated stuff in here that fits real-world uh, designs. Like this, for instance, I made... This is... a uh, a holder for a remote control for a DJI action camera. So it's a really small thing, but the holes have to fit six millimeter magnets. Uh, this has to fit the actual remote control very nicely. And there has to be an indentation here. And there's little clips there. And this has to go to a wristband. So this is very exact. And I have all sorts of measurements here that I can change whenever I want. So if I want to make the same design, for where's the magnet? I have a magnet with something other than 6.2 millimeters, but a, a magnet that is five millimeters. And there's a print offset, so I can say, okay, five millimeters. And it'll recalculate and make this. And this is very nice that you can do this. So there's a small magnet here now. I'll turn it back because it's auto saving, not too. So back to the original because this is the way I'm actually using it. So this is sketch-based design, right? Using blocks, sketching yourself, and this as well. That's Tinkercad and uh, Onshape. And there's lots of tools that do this sort of thing. Now, if we're going to Blender, so I have Blender, it's different again. There is a basic shape, there's a cube, and I can add more basic shapes like a cone or I can add a, uh, a, a torus, right? There's basic shapes. But what Blender does pretty much instantly is it gives you access to the base parts of these shapes. So in here, if I want to change the shape, all I can do is change the scale in different ways, pretty much. Right. Sometimes you can say here how many sides you want, how detailed you want the shape, right? Or if you want it a bit rounded, it's very limited. In here, yeah, I can uh, change the scale of my circle or the position of my circle. But if I want to uh, add or remove some parts of the circle, it's really hard. And in Blender, I have my basic shapes, but instantly I can go into edit mode and actually see my cube has eight corners. I can select a corner, a vert, and I can move it. This is awesome. So I have full control of this shape. The same goes for my cone. 
So I can see my cone is actually made up of all these points and I can just move a point whenever I want. This, I can't really do this easily in something like Tinkercad or Onshape. This gives me a lot of freedom. It also has some downsides. For instance, if I were to say I have a, uh, let's go to the front, you see, and I make a new cube, I'm going to make a hole for a, for a bolt, right? I can make a uh, cylinder. That's going to be my hole. Rotate it, make it a bit smaller. See, and it's already, wait, I'm being, I'm not being nice to Blender. There we go. So this is my hole, right? And I'm going to subtract it. So I'm going to make... On this one, give it a modifier, a boolean it's called, and say it's a difference with the cylinder. I'm going to hide my cylinder. Look, I have a hole. So this seems similar to on shape, right? But if I'm going a bit further in my design, maybe I'll apply it. And now, so I have all the points. This is great. Blender can do this, and I can't really do this in on shape. So I have the points, I'm going to make it transparent. I can just take these two points and move them here. Now, to make this shape in on shape, I would have to draw this shape and extrude it as a whole. In Blender, I can just take the points and move them. Downside is, if I now say I want this hole, so I'm going to select the entire hole, and I want it to have a specific diameter, I can't change the original drawing. I can't go back in time and make the diameter of the circle less or more. So that's troublesome. <laughs> I can, there's some tricks of course. So I know for instance, I could take one cube is a millimeter and I can have a look and I'm going, look, yeah, I want it to be five millimeters. So when do I have five? So that's like, yeah, one, two, three, four, five grid points, right? So maybe that's five millimeters, if that's my setup. But it's not exact. And that's something that Onshape can do, for instance. So if I'm designing uh, a fitting part, like a, a holder for a remote control, I'll do that in Onshape, right? If I want to do something really basic, like uh, I go in here and I want to do something with my kids, wait. I'll go to basic shapes and I just want to go, all right, I want to make a, uh, what do you call it? A keychain, and I want the text to be my name, right? I can do that here. And this is so simple in this program. And I can export this and 3D print it if I want, you know, I'll do that here. I'm not going to do that in Onshape because it's more trouble. And I'm not going to do it in Blender either. But what Blender does do is it allows you full control from start to finish. So if I take something a bit more complicated, like a shape like this. So this is a experimental design I did a couple of years ago. I can just take a point and move it wherever I want instantly. You always have that sort of control. The downside of that as well is if you're just getting started, um, you can overwhelm yourself pretty easily. So if I go back to my basic cube, right, it's very easy for me to extrude some stuff and just go, yeah, I have points and I'm going to move this here and I'm going to move that there. And yeah, I think this looks good and I'll do some proportional editing and yeah, we're making that and oh crap, right? That's not what I had in mind. That happens a lot when you're getting started in Blender, that you end up with a bit of a mess <laughs> because they give you full power to get started. Um, the upside of that is if you make something uh, very neatly and you make it purely in Blender, it's going to work in every other software as well. So if you want to make something for 3D printing, uh, Blender is great for checking models made in other software.
Because if you make it well in Blender, it's going to work. But you have to have uh, a lot of control. I know in, in fighting, for instance, if you're in cage fighting, someone uh, gives someone else a low blow, the referee tells them, control your weapon. <laughs> and that's something you have to do in Blender. In Blender, you have to be a bit careful with what you do. You can't just go and just move stuff around wildly because you're going to end up with a mess. And maybe you have some employees who can fix the mess for you. If you don't, you're better off sort of, yeah, having a good look at what you're doing, deciding what you want to do and just being very deliberate. For instance, I tell my students, this is the last little thing I'll mention, is what I always say in Blender is you look around in 3D what you want to do, but whenever I move something in Blender, I always go to a 2D sort of setup and I move things in the 2D space because if you move something when you're, perspect you're completely in perspective and looking from different angles, <laughs> it's so easy to, to sort of go, wait, what happened here? Because you're just, it's hard to imagine what's happening. And if I'm going from top perspective down, I know what I'm doing, see? Now I know where I'm moving it. I'm only moving it in the plane from which I'm looking. So that's sort of my perspective on uh, what makes Blender special. Full control, but control your weapons. Own your weapon is what they say, right? So Tinkercad, just shapes, uh, sketching in on shape. And in Blender, you can model whatever you want, but yeah, it's a bit harder to get going. But yeah, it gives you much more freedom as well. I hope it's useful to you if, I'm, uh, if I did it like this. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and uh, we'll see. Thanks very much for having a look.